All right, guys, today we're talking about PSU, polysulfone from 3DX Tech. This is Thermax PSU made with polysulfone. <laughs> it's a fantastic choice given its extremely high temperature qualities, very good sterilization capacity, and chemical toughness. PSU can be found in a variety of industries, uh, ranging from automotive to aerospace and defense. So here's the box and the spool inside that you get when you buy it from visionminer.com slash materials. Looks like this. It comes in a vacuum sealed bag. Now if that's not sealed when you get it, no worries. You have to dry this no matter what before you use it for the first time. So no worries there. By the way, why do you want to buy from us? Simple, you get 3% back on every dollar you spend. That can be used towards nozzles, spools, glue, machines, accessories, more filament, anything you want. Plus, we're always on the phone to help you when you need it when you bought it from our store. So definitely check that out. We've got everything from machines to nozzles to filament and everything you need for high temp 3D printing. What are you waiting for? Click that link in the description below, visionminer.com slash materials. Anyway, let's talk about a little bit of where you're gonna see this material in actual industries. Firstly, you're gonna see it in a lot of medical instrument components. You're gonna see it in manifolds, medical trays, autoclavable instruments, uh, and other industries use it for connectors and coil bodies, high frequency insulators, lamp sockets, protection caps and antenna sockets. In automotive, you'll see it uh, used with oil level indicators, valve spools, flanges, tubes, pump cases, and inspection windows, lots and lots of things due to the chemical resistance and high temperature of PSU. You. Now, what kind of machine do you need to print this filament? Firstly, your nozzle needs to go to at least 360 Celsius, and we generally print anywhere from 360 to 390. Now, on the bed, we printed about 160, but you can print as low as 120. As far as adhesives go to keep it down on the bed, our nanopolymer adhesive still works great for this material. Uh, along with PPSU and everything else, performance, nanopolymer adhesive works really good. You can get some of that at visionminer.com slash adhesive. As far as a heated chamber, you do want to have a heated chamber for this stuff as it does love to work. By the way, if this video is helpful to you, please hit that like button. It tells the algorithm that our content is valuable and that you want more of it. Uh, you might as well subscribe while you're down there as well as we've got a lot more of these videos on the way. So for drying the filament, yes, you absolutely have to dry this stuff as soon as you get out of the box, even when it's brand new, just like most plastics before you process them, which is a fancy word for melting. Now, if you really want to dry your filament well, we've got an entire kit available on our website, fishminer.com slash dry kit with vacuum chambers and ovens. From our shop to yours, we're here to make this whole process easy for you, along with the metal spools that we made so that we could dry it extra fast at higher temperatures. Super important if you don't want to melt your spools and have them warping all over the place. Uh, uh, definitely a good to have. Okay, so let's talk about some basic material specifications. We've got a heat deflection temperature or continuous use temp of 172 Celsius, a glass transition of 187 Celsius, and it is an amorphous thermoplastic, and it can be annealed to get extra strength out of your parts. Now, speaking of strength, for tensile strength, you get around 52 megapascals on the ISO 527 standard, but do keep in mind that the way your part is designed, the orientation of which is printed, will have a dramatic effect on the strength. You always, almost always, lose a certain percentage in the z-axis depending how it's printed and how the geometry of the part is designed. All the data sheets are available on our online store at visionminer.com data, so you can find the tensile modulus, the elongation, impact strength, and all that other juicy data on our website. Okay, so let's talk about some specific environmental factors. For UV, it's got fair resistance. It's not the greatest. You will see a little bit of weathering if you leave it out in the sun for years on end, uh, but overall it's pretty good. Now as far as hydrolytic resistance, it's very good. It's often used in steam and hot water applications in the food industry, like this thing right here, which I'll get into more later. It actually goes in the top of a coffee machine, boiling water going over it. It's also very chemically resistant to gasoline, though not necessarily aviation gasoline, uh, oil and hydrocarbons, diesel, petrol, alcohols, especially ethyl and butyl alcohol, and acetone. It's not recommended for chlorine, sulfuric acid, but it does really well in hydrochloric acid. Now, as far as electrical properties go, uh, it's highly resistive. It's a great insulator with a dielectric constant of 3.18 and a dissipation factor of 0.113. Next, let's get into biocompatibility certification. It's a little more on sterilization. 
It is not certified biocompatible, but it is often used in the food industry for everything from steam environments like coffee makers to high temp, high pressure applications, and it can be autoclaved and sterilized in many ways. Okay, so let's check out some of these parts that we've got on the table. Uh, as we mentioned for coffee, I've got a customer that's made thousands of these over the last couple of years and they literally have like three or four machines and they're just printing these all day and all night. They got them in big batch prints and they're short enough so you can do that and they're selling these for <laughs> a good price, I'll tell you that much. Uh, this is from the same customer and it is a competition pour over. So you can pour boiling water into this stuff over the coffee grinds and not worry about it breaking down or leaching into your food. It's really, really good for that. Some of these things are like, this is a blown up electrical connector. So you have the, the metal components inside and this is part of a plug. Very, very good for that type of application. Also, you know, this is a type of thing with threading already into it. Um, and it's used as a capsule. I believe this was actually, they would put a fitting on top of this and then in these bottom ports, they would screw into those and it would, you know, disperse whatever, or maybe it would, you know, combine them all into one. But for, you know, anything that's highly abrasive chemicals and acids and things like that, it's very good for that. Uh, we've also got the parts that we did in most other materials. And as you can tell, the color will sometimes change. A lot of the times it's, almost perfectly translucent. Sometimes you get a little bit of a yellowish hue like on this part here. Uh, this is a jig type deal for some sort of manufacturing process. It's very, very hard and you can machine it. So you can actually do a manufacturing, uh, like a CNC pass to smooth out sides or things of that nature. Uh, it's really cool, high temp and hard enough to be machined. Very, very key point. Uh, we've also got these vases here just so you can see sort of the surface finish and all these materials, all these parts were printed on the Funmat HT which is only 7500 bucks and obviously the further you go up the spectrum with the higher chamber temps and everything the better it's going to be. Uh, but as far as it goes this is um, these are pretty good. So we're going to get into some actual testing right now. I'm going to get this uh, this vice over here. We're going to burn some of this stuff. We're going to break some of this stuff. By the way, if you are interested in PSU and need to test it in a specific environment, like an acid or a temperature or something like that, we have these sample bars, which we can send you. And um, just give us a call. Tell us about your application. We'll send you a couple different materials that you can check out and test out. And also feel how rigid and strong they are. So this first test, uh, we're actually gonna break this and just see how it breaks. We're gonna see if it breaks along the layers, if it explodes, if it bends, like how it sort of works. Just a simple, basic test. And of course, safety glasses, safety first, safety third, whatever you want. Anyway, I'm gonna just put this down here in the vise, tighten it up, and we're just gonna use the power of Rob to <laughs> see how this thing breaks. All right, here we go. Yeet. I'm expecting this to shatter. Oh, not bad. It actually didn't. It's a little bit higher impact strength than uh, Ultim 1010, it seems like. We had a clean break. Looks like this is a pretty much isotropic part, as you can't even see any of the layer lines inside of there. It didn't explode and go all over the room, which is uh, definitely a testament to the impact strength and the elasticity or elongation of the material is stretched before it broke as opposed to just shearing and exploding and all that kinetic energy going everywhere. Um, very cool, very cool. As mentioned before, it is pretty translucent. As you can see here, uh, my, you know, you can see everything through it. Really, really cool stuff. All right, now I'm gonna take one of these beautiful vases right here and I'm just going to uh, show you how much we can bend the top it's got some pretty good ductility there. It's not cracking or shattering. It's just bending fully. That's pretty good. So I'm just gonna take this vase and I'm going to stick my two thumbs in. I'm just gonna press in. We're gonna see how it breaks. If it breaks across the layers, straight down, if a chunk pops out or what happens. Let's just check it out. That's cool. That's very cool. It's got a lot of give. I'll do the other side real quick. So it's got a lot of give there, as you can notice, and then it did end up breaking along the weakest link, which is the axis, like most materials. All right, cool. 
not bad. It stayed together a lot more than the other material, some of the other materials. Um, it didn't shatter a bunch of the layer lines. It literally picked the weakest one and sheared across that line. If you really look at this, it's not even across one particular layer. It's actually stair-stepping around. And this is a vase printed with a 0.4 nozzle at 0.6 millimeter extrusion width. So we're getting a little bit of press down and just a nice vase. Very, very good. Woo! Okay. Yeah, crackle, crackle. Uh, very good. All right, so next we're going to burn this thing. But before I do, I'm going to whip out the Bofa Print Pro 2, which has a flex arm. We do sell these on the website. They're available at visionminer.com slash Bofa. And this is just so we don't get the uh, fumes all over the place. We've got full setups, for fully contained heated chamber printers, and we've got stuff like this that you can use for soldering or anything else where there's fumes, even grinding. You know, you can soak up a whole bunch of the particles and everything on whatever it is you're working on. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a part of this and uh, let's do, let's uh, let me break off a chunk and we'll just, oh yeah. Okay, let's see how this burns. We're gonna watch if it lights on fire, if it drips, how much it smokes and how long it smokes uh, because high temperature is one of those things where we check all that out. So here we go, 10 seconds under flame. All right, it's on fire, it's still burning. This is not a UL 94V0 FST rating, as you can see, it's not extinguishing itself. I just extinguished that with uh, my breath. So, unlike a lot of our other high temp materials with the UL 94V0 FST rating, it is not self-extinguishing and it does like to put off a lot more fumes. Let's do that again. Let's get another look. So if I do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that did not light it on fire. It did smoke a little bit. It stopped already. Let's do the other side and get that burning again. Here we go. Four, five, six, seven, Eight. So once it's burning, now I don't know if this will drip. That's another test. It doesn't look like it's dripping in particular, but it's definitely not going out. Oh, that dripped. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. It's definitely uh, carbonized a little bit. It's become brittle. Um, so if you are worried about your part catching on fire and you don't want anybody to get harmed and you want it to self-extinguish, definitely check out PPSU or one of the Ultims or Peaks or anything else that we have on our site. They are definitely a little bit better for high flame applications. Now if you're doing boiling water and steam and stuff of that nature that's super high temperature but not necessarily catching on fire, this is a really good choice. All right, so that's all for this one, but check out our other videos for full comparisons. We've printed a lot of these parts in all the high temperature performance materials that we carry on visionminer.com slash materials. You can check them all out. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next video.